Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika, welcome to Floating in Dreams, which is my hobby YouTube channel where I like to talk about things fashion and makeup. And one of my favorite makeup products to chat about is eyeshadow palettes, in case you didn't know. And today I have an eyeshadow palette related video for you. An eyeshadow palette haul, featuring all the eyeshadow palettes that I bought in 2020. No. 2021. <laughs> That's the year we're in. Um, the reason why I'm confused is that because we, before we get to the palettes, I need to explain um, where some of these palettes come from. I decided to go on a bit of a low buy earlier in the year as I was bringing in quite a lot of palettes last year that to the point where I really struggled to try them all and all that because I have this policy where I like to try every single shade in a palette before I feel I can review it. So that means that I'm, I'm just not someone who can really keep up with all the releases. Um, and I just really struggled uh, trying to uh, keep up with everything that I was bringing into my own collection. In fact, the eyeshadow palette I'm wearing today is a palette that I bought in the home stretch of 2020 and I'm only getting around to using it right now. So that's why uh, I decided to limit myself to bringing in two palettes a month I kind of stuck to it, but not really. And there were two exceptions, and that was palettes I wanted to get for reviews. So things that I solely bought because I make YouTube content or because I want to review it on my blog. And uh, content, or there were a couple of palettes still on my wish list from last year that I couldn't get because uh, some brands stopped shipping internationally, and that's why. I wasn't able to get my hands on them yet. And I knew that if those palettes somehow would become available to me this year, that I would snatch them up straight away. So that's why there is quite a bit here. For someone who's been on a low buy, I'm gonna give you a minute here. How many palettes do you think I bought? Leave a comment down below. I'm gonna give it a minute. You decide. I bought 50 palettes on the dot. 5 0, not 1 5, 5 0, 50. Now, I do have to say that sometimes I've bought multiple palettes from a certain brand just to make it easier on shipping costs and those kind of things. Uh, and that's definitely where some of these things came from. And as I'm filming this, it is my birthday today. And that means that I did decide to buy a few more palettes this month just to celebrate my birthday. So they were a birthday present to myself. <laughs> so I'm going to talk you through all these palettes that I bought. Some of them I've already tried and reviewed and featured in videos, but there's also a bunch here that I haven't tried yet. So I'm super stoked that now that I've almost completed trying everything that I bought last year, because I'm sort of trying things on a whatever I bought like latest in the time period. So the earliest purchases I want to get to first. And that's how I sort of do it. So let me talk to you about those like subcategories first that sort of fall outside of the no buy, or the low buy, and then I'll show you what I actually bought as my two palette a month allowance. So there were a bunch of palettes that I still wanted to get from last year that I had put on my wish list, but that I couldn't buy or that just weren't being shipped yet. So I got all of these in in the springtime. I think I got most of these around like March, April time. And one of them that I was still on my wish list, but Violet Voss still doesn't ship to Europe, um, but was the Violet Voss Sugar Crystals palette. This never came to Beauty Bay back when they were still stocking it, and I was actually waiting it for, for it to come to Beauty Bay, but it never came. Violet Voss is no longer stocked on the Beauty Bay website, so I can only buy it from the official Violet Voss website. And I was looking into buying this, and then they decided to stop international shipping because of COVID. So I bought this off of Amazon in the end. Uh, and it worked quite well. It ended up being about as much money as I would have paid if I bought it from the official website anyways, because this had to come from the US. Um, and this is a bright pastel palette, so I already featured it in my pastel palette video. I've already done all the looks with this because I want to get to it ASAP, um, because it's just a really pretty rainbow color story with all these different textures and loads of pretty, pretty shimmers. So that's why I wanted to try that. And then a palette that I think a lot of palette, a lot of people ordered in 2020, but didn't get until this year. And it's the It's Freaking Bats from Beauty Bean and Shroud. So this palette just completely overwhelmed the brand. And they were like, we want to get these palettes out to everyone, um, but it will take some time. So I was hoping I would get this in like January, but it didn't end up arriving here until April um, because that's how long it took for them to ship it over. So this is one I haven't used yet. I'm very excited to try that. 
And then the other brand I still wanted to get some things from was Menagerie Cosmetics. And Menagerie is an indie brand that stopped shipping internationally because a lot of things went wrong with their international shipments due to the pandemic. And that's why they were like, okay, we are not gonna do this. In February, when they launched this palette, the Flight Club, they restocked a bunch of the other palettes that I wanted to get as well. And they opened shipping to a few countries to see if it would work and the Netherlands was part of it, so I was super happy because the thing I still wanted to get very badly was the violet ink in the packaging. They no longer do this. You can still get the shades, uh, but they, don't, they no longer sell the palettes. So I was super happy that I could still get my hands on this. I already used it, already featured it in a video. The Whale Song is the only one of these that I haven't put on my face yet. This is their blue-green palette, and I want to do a blue-green, like, overview video later in the year. So I want to try it out before I can film that, so I can film that video. I got the Pastel Pup, which was a release they did last year, and I was sort of waiting for reviews on this to see if I would want to get it, and then they stopped shipping. So <laughs> they restocked it, and then they closed the store. Blech. And then their new purple palette, which is the Flight Club. And that's what I got from Menagerie. So those were all of the things that I bought that were not part of my low buy and such, because these were things that I had already bought in 2020 or that I still wanted to get from that time period, but I just couldn't get my hands on it. And now we get to palettes that I sort of bought for reviews, for videos, and just because I'm curious after these. Um, and some of these I actually didn't like buy myself. So if you don't know anything about me, uh, then you probably aren't familiar with the fact that I try a lot of Essence and Catrice makeup. So I always buy a lot of their stuff to do videos with. Um, and the new Essence line came out with two palettes and I bought the one that appealed to me the most. This is the Out in the Wild don't stop blooming palette which i've already used and reviewed uh catrice did a limited edition uh, eyeshadow palette for spring which is the neo nude and this is what it looks like i was quite taken with this I, it was an online only release so i don't think a lot of people knew about this but it's got cooler tones and then warmer tone neutrals with some pops of neon and i thought it looked really pretty and i was actually quite surprised with how good the quality of this was i was very pleased with this one already reviewed it on my blog as well. I'll link any reviews and videos that I've done with some of these palettes below, because so, like I said, some of these I've already reviewed and done content with. Uh, this palette is the Clean ID eyeshadow palette that they did in uh, May, I think. They came out with a limited edition collection. So I used that uh, palette in that video. And then they came out with some more of these Pro Slim palettes. So the lavender one I've already tried, because that one I snatched up straight away. It's called Lavender Breeze. It's not as purple as you might like, and it's very fair toned. So that has to be your cup of tea. And then I decided to complete the set because I do have the other two that I've already tried before. So I bought the Peach and I bought the Neon Earth. So these are the warm toned ones. And I wanna try these as well so that I can do a video where I talk about all five of these palettes. So that's why those were also purchased. And then two other palettes that I bought mainly so I could try it for video purposes. I did a video with a full face of uh, Korean beauty. Uh, so I got an order from Yes Style and I wanted to try some more eyeshadow and I spotted this little curated palette. This is the Peach Sea Falling in Pink eyeshadow palette. And it was really, really pretty. The quality is amazing. It's got some lovely shimmers. I already tried this as well, which again, I will link down below. And in August, I hope to be doing a full face of Fenty Beauty. So I got myself their Smoky Eye palette. And I also want to get the Cool Tone Neutral, but since Fenty isn't that cheap, I decided to split my purchases and like, sort of do it over time. So I've been buying a bit of Fenty like every couple of months in the past few months to be able to do that video. But yeah, this looked like a really pretty cool toned color story. And then I wanna get the cool toned neutrals just to have something to lighten this a bit. Something I hardly do is buy new makeup releases straight away, but when Nabla came out with these, I was like, I wanna get these because as part of my low buy, or I already bought <laughs> two other cutie palettes to round out the set and then they came out with these ones. So these are part of that birthday present to myself kind of thing. Uh, so this is the Midnight. 
It's stunning blues with a bronze shade as well. This seems to be a bit of a topper. So I'm going to be filming a full face of Nabla over the weekend. Uh, so let me know which one of these you would like to see me use the most. However, the lipstick I have from Nabla is a red. So I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to be using any of these in that video because I do have a bright lip red lipstick. So I'm not sure if that's gonna go. And then they did the analog, which is sepia tones inspired by 1970s photography. This is warm tones and I was, and at first I was just like, I'm going to go, just going to get this one uh, because the blue one definitely appealed to me most. Uh, but then I found out what their inspiration was behind the palette. And I think this is the kind of color story that in the summertime can look really pretty with my brown eyes, just saying. And then over the springtime, a lovely subscriber wanted to send me some uh, German drugstore pro products. She sent me two palettes from Rival de Loup. So this is the Into the Jungle eyeshadow palette, which seems to be a really pretty like grungy color story, perfect for fall. And then also the Smoky Shadows palette, which is a lot of gray tones. So I'm not sure how I'll feel about these. And they're quite big, as in they're not big palettes, but they do have a lot of shades. And that's usually not my cup of tea because I get very stressed out if palettes have tons of shades. So that's why these I'm a bit apprehensive about, but I will definitely be trying them sometime this year. And then there were two brands that I saw people featuring in videos in the past couple of months, and they have been raving about it. And I was like, great, I wanna try them too. The first is a Polish indie brand called Glam Shop. And they do these really pretty eyeshadow palettes that aren't that expensive. I think these go for like just under 20 euros. So this is apparently green in Polish. I'm not sure, I don't speak Polish, so I can't say this, but this is definitely a green palette. Uh, they do another green palette, which is more like army greens, but this appealed to me most. And I actually saw Nikki Raven feature this on her channel and that made me wanna buy it. Um, then they also have a blue palette, and this I have to be very careful with because one of the shades broke a little bit in transportation. So that's the blue one. And then just because I also would like to try some neutrals from them, I bought the Coco Sanka. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. Like I said, I don't speak Polish. I looked it up and apparently it stands for coconut biscuit, according to Google Translate. But isn't this a pretty cool toned color story? I think this looks really stunning. So I can't wait to try these, but these are definitely sort of like last in. So they're gonna go on the back burner. I probably won't be trying these until October. And then another brand I wanted to try was She Glam. A lot of people were like, I saw quite a lot of people talking about these. And this is the makeup brand from She In, which is a like Chinese clothing store. I'm not really into these places, but I saw Robert Welsh do a video where he did a full face of She Glam and he was quite impressed with their eyeshadow palette quality. And these retail for like five to seven euros each. And I'm like, okay. So I got a couple of those and I just got these in. I like these are very hot off the press. I literally got the package just yesterday. Uh, this is their Splash Bash palette and this I'm super excited for because I haven't even taken pictures of these, you guys. This is purples, pinks, and greens. Really pretty. It's sort of like uh, that Morphe palette, the 9M that they launched, but then without the neutrals. They smell really uh, cheap. Then I have the Deep Feelings, which I think is there, is that cool toned palette that I wanted to try, a bit smoky. Like, like that taupe. <laughs> and then, oh, and the reason why I got a few of these is because it would just make it a bit more worth it with shipping for both of these brands to uh, get a bit more. Um, so that's what I like to do sometimes. And this is their Hello Yellow, which is yellow, but it also has quite a bit of green. And then you get these like grayish blue tones, which seem very interesting to throw those in the mix. And this is the one that I saw, actually, who did I see this feature? I watched an eyeshadow palette collection from someone called, it's not your basic Steph, I believe her channel is called. And she showed this, the Cactus Cool. And I was like, cool tone greens, anyone? Yes, I'm down. Because I do, like greens can be quite warm tone sometimes. So 
This is lovely too. I'm really taken with that. And the one I'm least impressed with, just looking at it, is the Wolf Calls. I do like the 8-bit design of the of the packaging, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a bit of a game nerd, so I do like that. Uh, and this is just, I thought it was more blue toned when I ordered it, but it's more gray toned actually. So lots of cool tone color stories, bit of fun. So I hope these can be fun. All right, so now we get to the actual fun part. So the low buy part of this video, which is two palettes a month. And like with the Glam Shop and She Glam products, I did sometimes order more than one palette for my two palette allowance just to make it easier on shipping and all that. So my two palettes for January were these ones. So the Angelica Nuquist collab with Kaleidos came out, which is the Club Nebula. I haven't used this one yet. So this is the first one I want to get to, uh, so that I'm super excited for. And then I also got the Natasha Denona Mini Love palette. This I did already use because I knew that I wanted to make my first like 10 palette review video of the year on all of these like mini palettes that I had bought over the Black Friday sales. And I wanted to make sure I could feature that in that video. So this I've already reviewed uh, and used as well. So that was my January pick. And then for February, I bought these two palettes. So we finally got the Retro Paradise from e.l.f. in, I think, end of February, it launched here. So this was a summer release for the US last year and we didn't get it until the winter time. Oh well, uh, it definitely did come, finally. Uh, so that's why I did buy that straight away because it was on my wish list. But with e.l.f. it's just no way, like some products we get quite quickly and then others can take months to release, like months. Uh, and then I got the Odin's Eye, the Norns palette. And I just got the one that was the bigger one because the other ones, like the smaller ones, didn't really appeal to me. And this color story, I don't know why. Save for that shimmering orange, like if I were to cover that up, I like everything this palette has going on. These shimmers in the bottom, I thought they were going to be pressed glitters, but they're not. And you sort of get like mauve rosy tones, like a bit more cool over here. You've got some stunning teals and some like greens. This red is really stunning too. So it just has a really good array of shades. And I think one, two, three, four, like four of them are true mattes and everything else has shimmer. So for me, with my shimmer loving heart, this just was right up my street. And I have the Odin's Eye Solomona eyeshadow palette. I really like it, so I knew I wanted to try more from the brand. This I also haven't used yet. For March, I bought this, and this is the Naked Wild West from Urban Decay. Of course I was going to buy this. Who do you think I am? Uh, it's an Urban Decay Naked palette, so I have to try it. And this palette I haven't used yet, and I think this is actually more of a summer palette for me than anything, so I can't wait to try it now that it is summer and I've pretty much like, I can now get around to these things, which is lovely. And then I also bought some more Vizzy Art shadows and I got these together because uh, that's the way I would get free shipping from the website. So that's why I bought two instead of just one. But this one was on a deal. This is their dark edit. And I tried the Petite Pro last year's summer and I ended up loving it. So I bought two of the other ones. I bought the Midsummer and the uh, Violette Etendue at the end of 2020. So I just, I wanted to get some more. And then I bought their Petite Four Lilas as well, to, just to round out that order. For April, I uh, bought a palette that was newly released that I have already featured in a video because it's the Mary Jane from Melt Cosmetics, which I featured in my latest Cool Tone palette video because of course I couldn't leave this out. And this is a palette that is, has been getting a lot of flack um, but for me, this ended up working really well. I really enjoyed it uh, and I have already used that one then. And then my other April purchase was from Alien Cosmetics. This is the first new indie brand that I decided to buy from this year that I hadn't tried before. They were restocking their Serendipity palette and I had heard people saying great things about this. And their Fairy Frolic was actually one that I featured in a new makeup, makeup release is saying that looks stunning, but I think it will be a very expensive brand to try from. The shipping on this is, as with many US indie brands, shipped by weight. So the shipping is quite steep, which is why I bought two palettes, because whether I got two palettes or one in shipping, it didn't really matter all that much. And this way I can really try the brand. Uh, so this is what the Serendipity palette looks like. 
and this is what the fairy frolic looks like. And then we have my May purchases and for May I got these. So the Huda Beauty chocolate brown palette was one that I put on my wish list saying I'll wait for a sale and then it was on sale because I did a 30% off of all Huda Beauty stuff and so I decided to pick it up. This was the only one that I liked from that entire Brown Obsessions collection. And now that I'm looking at this, this looks quite similar to the analog palette from Nabla. <laughs> like the cutie palette I showed you. And then I mentioned I had already bought cutie palettes as part of my low buy. And I decided to get two because again, it was easier on shipping. Um, and that's the Metropolitan, which was my least favorite one of the bunch when I had seen it online. And then I got home and I swatched it. And I was like, oh, but that's really lovely. I thought it looked very similar to the Coral Cutie, but actually now that I've been able to put them side by side, I feel they're nothing like it. And then the Nude really surprised me because this is almost like a perfect neutral tone palette. I thought it was going to be very warm toned, but actually, now that I have at home, these brown shades all have like a hint of something mauve to them, making them super duper wearable, and the golds aren't too stark or weird or yellow. So I'm actually now really happy to own both of these. For June, well, the, this could be June or July, because I got it sort of like at the end of June. Uh, the, these were the two picks I, uh, I went for. I have never tried kimchi makeup and I'm just really taken with their blushes. But then I spotted the Virgin Mojito eyeshadow palette. Look at this color story! And I haven't heard anybody talking about these shadows. I have no clue whether this is really great quality or not. But that's the lovely thing when you, you know, buy your own makeup and you go onto online stores and you, you look for brands that you may want to try and then you find these kind of things. I think it looks super cute and kimchi, like I've only watched one full season of RuPaul's Drag, Drag Race and it's the one with uh, kimchi in it. And I, that, that's, that, if I have to pick a favorite drag queen, it would be her, so. <laughs> I would like to support. And then the LA Girl Main Stage Palette. This, okay, I tried their Hot Hot Heat last year and I really liked it, but the color story was a bunch of warm toned neutrals with cooler toned colorful shades. And I liked the colorful shades, but I wasn't really a fan of the warm toned neutrals. So I decluttered that and now they do this, which is, this is me in a palette, you guys. These shimmers at the top are insane. One of them is a bit fragile, so I have to be very careful. And then you get these like more like jewel tone kind of things. You get some berry shades. This is really pretty. And it's the same quality as the Hot Hot Heat. And these are very affordable palettes. These are only $17.50. I know a lot of people are raving about BH Cosmetics, but please don't sleep on the LA Girl ones because they do some really pretty ones. It's just that I felt the Hot Hot Heat didn't have a perfect color story for me personally. And then since we're already in July and I have these in, uh, my July purchases are these ones. That This is why I say, um, this is why I was saying that the other ones could count to July or June because I got all of these around the same time. Um, but yeah, that, that's sort of how it plays out in my brain. Uh, Colourpop, we're doing free shipping and I figured that if I were to just place a few orders with Colourpop, I could still get these in before the EU regulations would change. So these are the mini palettes that I got. And the plan is to review all of these in one giant review over on my blog. So the, what I kind of done, because Colourpop really the first six months of the year didn't really review a lot, like they didn't release a lot of things that I was very interested in. So what you see here is like one palette, like very randomly picked from different collections that they've done in the year so far. So I think one of the first things they came out with was the Bambi collection. So I got the little Thumper palette because this is cool toned. It's got these really nice, like pretty mauve shades and then this like very pretty, like greenish shimmer. I'm not sure how this will all go together. I know some people have already decluttered this because they didn't think it was great, um, but I think this is really cute. And you know, Thumper is my favorite character in the Bambi movies. So I thought I could try that. Um, I think another thing they did quite recently, like quite early on in the year was the Animal Crossing collection. And I, I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but I believe that Betty Jean said the green one was her favorite. And this was the only color that really appealed to me. So I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. And 
I keep this in the box because the box and the actual palette are different. This is Nuke Ink. I don't do Animal Crossing, so I don't know anything about it. Look at that, look at those greens. Isn't that pretty? I just wish that this was an actual shimmer and it wasn't a pressed glitter, because that feels like a pressed glitter. Though not as chunky as some of the other ColourPop press glitters that they've done in other palettes. So I do think it's a different texture. And then I think another one they did very early on were these neutral palettes in the five pans. Um, this is the Ballet, which is their cool toned one. And the reason why I keep this in the packaging is because this plastic packaging just feels so incredibly cheap. And the outer box is just way prettier than this thing is. So that's why I'm keeping it in the box. You get one matte and four shimmers in here. And this is a lovely cool toned color story. And then the other ones, I have one of their like mini four pen palettes as well. They did a bunch of these neutral ones. This is cream soda, which is apparently more like neutral slash cool toned leaning. It looks very pretty. It actually reminds me a lot of the peach C palette that I was holding up earlier. Um, but this again, very cheap packaging. I don't like this new plastic packaging that Colourpop has at all. Then, again, a situation where the actual palette feels quite cheap, which is why I keep it in the box. This is the Cashmere Forever palette, and this is one of those five pen colorful shades that they came out with in like April or May. I only picked up the purple one because I feel that Colourpop and purples they need, to, they need to up their game. And then last but not least, from their new Neon collection, I already mentioned this in the new makeup releases, again, that really cheap packaging. And my worst pet peeve is that this sticker isn't on straight. It's like slanted, it's... <clears throat> but this is what that looks like. So it's neutrals, like cool tone neutrals with a pop of neon pink. And finally, I got myself the three Sydney Grace Temptalia palettes. So let me see. This is the Quintessence. I can't say that properly. Um, this is what it looks like. I went for the deep version because in the light, these two shades are light grays and I don't like grays in cool tone palettes. This comes with a matte taupe and a lighter teal compared to this. So a bit more gray toned. Um, and I do really like that. So that's why I went with the deep quintessence. Uh, then the second one is the On the Horizon that I did get in the light because these two transition shades just look like it could be really perfect for me personally. And this I thought was already, like this was the other one that I was most interested in, but it does have a bit of warmth here. Like this like orangey tone, it looks very orange in the pan. I found that it, it's more of a rose gold. So that does still work really well on me as well. And the Radiant Reflection, I just kind of bought it because as a set, I think that buying all three was $100. And then with the Temptalia code, the three palettes together were about as expensive as buying two, which is why I got all three. Um, so the Radiant Reflection is my least favorite one, just looking at it, mainly because it has that really yellow tone gold in the middle of the palette. Now that I've swatched it, if I just cover this up, it looks like a perfect palette for me. You get a lot of like lovely rosy tone shades and then blues and greens. I like that. I really, really do. Here as well, uh, these two mattes, I think it's this one and this one. Uh, those two I bought again for the light version because it just looked like something that might work on me better. I just love a good eyeshadow palette. You know that about me. Like I said, I have already tried some of these, so I'll make sure to leave all those links down below, whether it's videos or blog posts or those kind of things, so you can already have a look at some of these and everything else will be coming up in well, videos very soon. I'll have a 10 palette review coming for you, but it's going to feature some of the older palettes that I was still making my way through um, in the past couple of months. And then hopefully from, I don't know, September, October onwards, I think I should be able to start reviewing these, just so you know, if I haven't featured them anywhere else yet. Uh, so yeah, that's it for me for right now. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week. Lots of eyeshadow palette content coming your way. In fact, I completely forgot to say this, but I am doing eyeshadow palette month again next month. So in case you weren't here last year, I uh, like to dedicate August to eyeshadow palettes. 
and then all the content that goes live is eyeshadow palette related. So if you have any video ideas, then leave them in the comment down below. I kind of have everything planned out already, kinda, but maybe you just have a really brilliant idea and then of course I would like to feature it. So definitely stay tuned as well for August because then we'll be doing nothing but eyeshadow palettes again, you guys. So I hope you would like to stay tuned for all of that goodness and then I hope to, you have a great day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.